Alright, so let's take a look at the pathfinding system in Aerotopia. So this is something I've been working on in the last week, and it has taking, taken a lot of time to kind of understand how to build this in the first place, but I finally got it in a working condition. Uh, it's not perfect yet, there's still some issues here and there, but I want to show what I have so far. Um, so just really quick, I'm going to put some stuff down so that my little villagers don't die. Alright. So, um, what you're seeing right now are just a bunch of debugging lines that I'm using in order to visualize the pathfinding system. Uh, but really what, what's important here is, so first of all, these little dots on the ground, right? The little gray dots. Um, those are the pathfinding nodes. And so, um, each node represents a position that an NPC can walk to. Um, and just disregard the little animation bug right there. Uh, <laughs> So each little node represents um, a position an NPC can walk to, and a red node indicates one that's blocked, so they cannot reach. So you'll see, like right here against this wall, you'll see a bunch of red ones, and they're hidden, but underneath this uh, terrain piece right here, this little elevated part, will be a, a bunch of red dots. So those are unreachable nodes within the system. And under the under the hood, it uses um, it uses the a, a star sorry a star algorithm in order to find paths so as you can see right there if I hold shift and click I can put down some waypoints and and test it out um, and it uses a star in order to find these paths and it works decently all right so as you can see it's navigating around these buildings here and so that's what the NPCs are using internally to find path so that's path finding uh, which is again pretty pretty straightforward and the way I've done that I've implemented a nav map module here and it's given me quite a few items here so the most important one right here is find path and I give it a world start and world end position just vector three values and it spits back a path if it can find any now what's cool is that this is also also uh, um, using a flood fill algorithm and I learned this from the banished developer uh, and this will speed up um, the algorithm in cases where there is no path possible because the zones don't match. And so imagine that there's a river splitting uh, up a map into two pieces. Uh, that means a node on the far left side may not be reachable to a node on the far right side because the river is in the way. So the flood fill algorithm would actually mark each node with the zone that they're in, maybe zone one or zone two, um, right off the bat. And so if you even try to find a path between that far left, far right node, it would immediately stop the algorithm and say, oh, we're not even in the same zone, so we're not even going to try. So that's really nice because otherwise your pathfinding algorithm would exhaust searching all the possible nodes and it would take a lot of time to fail. Um, so that's a really nice optimization. So in the case where a path is just completely unreachable to begin with, um, the pathfinding system here will not even run. So that's a nice optimization again. All right, so now what you're seeing, all the NPCs are going to get food at the house here. <laughs> and it's it's not perfect. As you see, they're kind of glitching about a little bit here and there, but for the most part, it's working. So what you're seeing here is uh, what's called path following. So a Roblox user, Quinty, he, uh, he showed me a really cool article demonstrating how to do this properly. Uh, again, it's a little glitchy right now, but that's all right. Um, and so basically is this, right? So um, given an actor, which is a little triangle thing, an actor could be a vehicle, a little NPC, whatever. Given an actor in a path right here, uh, how can we apply velocity to this actor in order to follow this path? Um, and so it's actually pretty straightforward and this article really breaks it down in a really nice and clean way. Um, but what we need to do, first of all, is figure out these points, right? So in order to find this future vehicle location, it's really simple. You take the velocity of your object, and uh, you, you take the normal velocity of it, and then you multiply it by some value. So if you want to look you know, a distance of 5 ahead, you would multiply uh, the normal velocity by 5 and add it to your current position, and that would look ahead 5. And so that's what you're seeing with the little blue line is it's projecting the future position ahead by like a distance of I think one uh, or maybe two so not that far ahead so 
once you do that, you have that future position that might be possible. From there, we need to find this normal point. And that's kind of difficult, but it's basically a tan, it, it's a, it is the uh, perpendicular line coming from this path right here. And uh, through some really clever math that this describes, um, you can get that uh, location. And it, it's actually quite interesting how they figure it out. There's quite a, it, I mean, at the end of the day, it's pretty simple uh, trigonometry but then they even simplify it farther using the dot product in a really clever manner. Uh, and so at the end of the day, you are getting that point uh, using just this. So given your, your future position and your A and B part of your line, you can get that normal point through that little bit of code. Um, really clever. Again, I'm not a master at trigonometry, so I, I can't explain it super well. Um, but that's how we get our future point there, right? And then we need to move ahead because that's our target point that we actually want to move toward, right? And so what we do is we take our normal point that we found on the line and we take the direction of our line and we again multiply that direction by the distance from that point in order to get our target position. From there, then we can decide whether or not we want to add certain velocities to our actor in order to reach that point, uh, in which case we steer him around and get them to the right position. So that, again, is what we're seeing here. Uh, when these NPCs move around, they are following the path in a pretty interesting way. So let me call a couple other ones over here again just to demonstrate that. All right, so now we've got a couple longer paths. Um, so we see this guy, again, sorry about the, the animation issue. The animations are supposed to pause when they're off screen, um, but sometimes there's a bug when, the, when they come on screen, they don't start back up. But as you can see, he's following the path, um, not perfectly, as you can see, but it actually kind of smooths out uh, some of those rougher path pieces, which is kind of cool. We'll see another guy. He's you know, he's just gonna cheat. He's just gonna jump all the way across here. <laughs> so yeah, that that's kind of uh, the process that we see here. Uh, and the reason that you're seeing them cut through right here is um, their little job task when they're moving around uh, doesn't utilize pathfinding. And so what just happened is he went to the house and then went back, but it didn't use pathfinding to get there. So that's just a, again a little bug I had to fix. So let's try that one more time. So if we give a little building right here and we call our NPC, you'll see that the path is created and here he comes. Again, we have that animation bug, which I really need to fix. <laughs> and quite a, a tight little turn right here, but he'll just kind of rotate around it and there we go. So yeah, pretty straightforward overall. And we'll just spawn a couple of villagers here and there. So yep, uh, that is all I'm going to show for now. If anyone has any questions about how this system works or whatever, feel free to um, ask and I'll try to respond.